Okay, so as you can see, I'm getting out of the car. And in this vicinity right down here um, is where Long Street Square was. As you can see, the Alabama Monument there and the cannons and placements. And this is basically where Long Street Square was. He was ordered to hold and basically attack the Union. They thought the Emmitsburg Road was the far flank. And Long Street was really the far flank of the Confederate Army. He was the far flank of Lee's Army. So they attacked right up this hill in this area with the 15th Alabama, and their job was to push over Big Round Top, which you now see in front of us. This is Big Round Top. This is the biggest of the Round Tops, and it's one of the highest elevations here on the battlefield that you could possibly get on. But Long Street's men of Alabamians had to literally attack come uphill all the way over here drop down and then attack the 20th main in the position of little round top so big round top down a little round top this is as good as it gets here at gettysburg this is where you get into the meat and the potatoes on july the second of the actions of july the second is long streets alabamians and then of course you hear about Colonel Joshua Chamberlain of the 20th Maine. Well, let's head there and see what we can find out. Okay, so as we're making our way to Little Round Top, this is the position of the 10th Pennsylvania Reserves. Now, Big Round Top you see right here on the very top, and it is just absolutely massive and incredible to look at. This was the scene of fierce fighting. As you can see, a lot of the stone wall is still here, even today, which is just absolutely nuts that it's all still here. But of course they probably did work on it, I can imagine. But uh, we're gonna walk and look, this is the position of the Army of the Potomac, 5th Corps, 3rd Division, 3rd Brigade. And some of the monuments. And could you just imagine, man, everything that all of these rocks have seen? So let's continue making our way to Little Round Top. And uh, as you can see behind me, Let's say goodbye to Big Round Top. Let's move on. Boy, he's got nothing at all. Sir, sir, what do we do for ammunition? Sir, my boys have to keep up muskets and they're back with them. Sir, we ought to pull out. No, we can't do that. We can't hold them again, sir. You know that. Well, if we don't, they go on by and over the hill and the whole flank caves in. Sir. Here they come. They gotta be tired, the revs. They gotta be close to the end if we are. So fix bayonets. Ellis, wait, Ellis, you take the left wing, I'll take the right. I want a right wheel forward of the whole regiment. What, you mean charge? Yes, but here's what we do. We're going to charge swinging down the hill. Just like we pulled back to this left side of the regiment, now we're going to swing it down. We swing like a door. We're gonna sweep them down the hill just as they come up. Understand? Does everybody understand? Yes, yes sir. sir. Okay, Ellis, you take the left wing, and when I give the command, I want the whole regiment to go forward swinging down to the right. All right, sir. Fine. Move. Hey, you're not!
Starting right wheel. Right wheel! Charge. Charge! The Union defensive line on Cemetery Ridge resembled the inverted fishhook, extending from Cups Hill on the north down Cemetery Ridge and southward towards Big and Little Round Tops. Although the 650-foot high Little Round Top was overshadowed by its larger neighbor, its position was more important because much of the hill was cleared of trees and it could better accommodate troops. Strategically, Little Round Top held the key to the developing battle. Colonel Strong Vincent as part of the defense of Little Round Top, which will be discussed a little more in depth in the next video, put federal troops in position to help repel attacks from the 15th Alabama who are pouring over Big Round Top. 16th Michigan held the right flank, 44 New York and 83rd Pennsylvania held the center, and the 20th Maine held the extreme left flank of the line. 14 of Major Homer R. Stralton's 2nd U.S. Sharpshooters armed with 52 caliber breech loading rifles fell in with Company B, the 20th Maine, and took up positions in the ravine. 824 men of the 4th and 5th Texas Regiments of Major General John Bell Hood's division hammered up the slope a little round top, pushing towards the center and right of Vince's line. Captain James H. Nichols, the commander of the 20th Maine's Company K, ran to alert Chamberlain that the Confederates seemed to be extending their line towards the regiment's left. Colonel Strong Vincent tried to rally his 3rd Brigade as the 16th Michigan staggered under the heavy assault by the 4th and 5th Texas. Just when the Federals were on the verge of collapse, Colonel Patrick O'Rourke led the 140th New York Swabs into the gap to save Vincent's Brigade. Both Vincent and O'Rourke paid with their lives. Elements of his division, the 15th to 47th Alabama, then began to smash the main troops. They had ordered these regiments, led by Colonel William C. Oates, to find a Union left, turn it, and capture a round top. Lee wants his best general, James Longstreet, to attack the Federal line parallel to the Emmitsburg Road with two divisions up under General Hood and McClaws and roll the Federal left flank like a carpet. Longstreet's right flank of attack is as follows. Army of Northern Virginia, 1st Army Corps, Hood's division. Under the command of Major General J.B. Hood, pitcher to here. Law's Brigade, up under the command of Brigade General E.M. Law, Colonel James Sherfield. Robertson's Brigade, Anderson's Brigade, Lieutenant Colonel William Luffin, Bennigan's Brigade, and four batteries of artillery under the command of Major M. W. Henry. Army of Northern Virginia Longstreet's Corps, Hood's Division, Robertson's Brigade, compiling of the 1st, 4th, 5th Texas, and 3rd Arkansas, entered into combat with 1,100 men and lost an estimated 540 men. The right flank of Longstreet's attack, Law's Brigade, up under Hood's Division, compiled of the 4th, 15th, 44th, 47th, and 48th Alabama Infantry. The Army of Northern Virginia 1st Army Corps McClaws Division, up under the command of Major General Lafayette McClaws, pictured here, consisted of Kershaw's Brigade, Barksdale's Brigade, Seals Brigade, Wolfers Brigade, and four batteries of artillery under the command of Colonel H.C. Cabell. So with the picture set, Joshua Chamberlain's 20th Maine, the rookie unit on the field of Gettysburg, who had only seen action at Chancellorsville and Fredericksburg, were now set to square off against Oates and Law as they made their attack across Big Round Top to Little Round Top on July the 2nd, 1863. Chamberlain's 20th Maine was to hold the Union flank. Okay, guys, we have made it here to the pinnacle and we are talking about the July the 2nd actions here at Gettysburg. But we're going to break this video up. And we're going to do this episode and then give you another. So stay tuned for that. But uh, 
if you've watched the movie Gettysburg, if you have, string up, if you have been a fan of that movie like me, then you know what this this next place is, without a shadow of a doubt. This is one of the most popular places on the Gettysburg battlefield. One of the most popular stories of the Gettysburg battlefield. And it is a really neat, neat thing to us for. But the 20th Maine, for me, was also caught interest because of the Alabama boys that attacked them. Because I am from Alabama, so this is where my pinnacle, I guess, of interest is. Um, and we are headed right now to visit where the 20th Maine and Colonel Joshua Chamberlain withheld the famous Confederate charge and charged battle. On the afternoon of July the 2nd, 1863, Union General Governor K. Warren found Little Round Top undefended. He quickly sent his staff to find troops to defend this vital position, and General George Sykes, commanding of the 5th Corps, agreed to send a single brigade to occupy the hill. Sykes' order was intercepted by Colonel Strong Vincent, commanding the 3rd Brigade, 1st Division, 5th Corps. Without waiting for approval from his commanding officer, Vincent took responsibility of taking my brigade there to Little Round Top, where you see right now. Riding ahead of his troops, Vincent ascended this hill and selected the ground where his brigade would make his stand. Vincent personally placed each of his four regiments. He entrusted his left flank to Colonel Joshua L. Chamberlain of the 20th Maine. Vincent's orders to Chamberlain were to hold the grounds at all costs or hold the grounds at all hazards. Within minutes of forming his line, Vincent's brigade was assaulted by Confederate regiments of Laws and Robertson's brigades who were Alabama men. Despite everything they did, a desperate battle ensued. And it ensued across the entire brigade line. The line held, but the cost was high, including Vincent, who was mortally wounded right here. So he rode up this hill right here that you see in front of me. If the wind's bad, I'm sorry. It is very windy in Gettysburg today, very cold, actually. And he come here to Little Round Top. And this is where the fight ensued. Three hundred and fifty-eight men of the 20th Maine Volunteers found themselves anchoring this line in front of you at the southern slopes of the Little Round Top. For more than an hour, wave upon wave upon wave of Alabamians come over this hill. And it was said that it was so deadly blood stained in puddles on the rocks. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna not focus so much on information and I'm going to show you this position. Could you imagine just blood staining these rocks? Here's the infamous wall. Yes, this is the wall. This is where the 20th Maine held their position against Alabama boys. On these rocks, blood was staining these rocks that you see now. These were the actual rocks here. It's just crazy to think about that. So these men stood here and held this position. So this is the wall of the 20th Maine where they stood. And we're gonna walk this thing all the way down to, or attempt to, to the 20th Maine Monument because we have to. This is one of the things I wanted to do. Of course, it kind of ends right here, goes around. And uh, let's climb back up on a hill because it looks like that's all we can really do right now. Okay. So we come here and we find ourselves
at the 20th main right flank. This was the right flank. Could you imagine Alabamians storming out in front of you? Men standing here, their muskets firing. Wow, I know it's hard to hear. <laughs> but like I said, could you just imagine men standing here firing muskets in this direction of Alabamians who's just storming this hill at wave after wave after wave after wave. This is Little Round Top. This is where the 20th Maine and Colonel Joshua Chamberlain who was awarded a medal of honor for his actions in this very location stood and fought off well probably some family members of mine as bad as that is to say it is the honest to god truth this is just so surreal to see this in person Here is the monument to the 20th Maine. We are here, it is starting to rain, wind's blowing. It's getting pretty pretty rough, if I must say so myself. But we're gonna do a little bit of walking. I wanna show you guys something, if I can find it, that not a lot of people see. And this will make this video worthwhile. And here's supposedly the left flank of the 20th main marker. Now there is another marker here and uh, we were going to try to find it but we are too pressured for time and we have a lot to cover no time to cover it and this was the most requested thing from you guys was a little round top and it is raining great <laughs> but we're going to continue on anyway during the fight for Little Round Top, Colonel Joshua Chamberlain became wounded when a shell exploded nearby, peppering his foot with shrapnel or wood splinters. For his actions on July the 2nd, Colonel Joshua Chamberlain was awarded the Medal of Honor. The 20th Maine lost 29 men killed, 91 men were wounded, and 5 men were missing in action. The names of all of these casualties are now on the monument that overlooks the area where the 20th Maine fought on July the 2nd, 1863 on Little Round Top. However, Colonel Joshua Chamberlain wasn't the only soldier that became a hero 
on July the 2nd. Color Bearer Sergeant Andrew Tazier was also awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions on July the 2nd. According to the American Battlefield Trust's website, 25-year-old Color Sergeant Andrew J. Tazier of the 2nd Maine quickly emerged as an unlikely hero, and he was later awarded the Medal of Honor for his bravery during the fight for Little Round Top, which occurred on July the 2nd, 1863. Perhaps he may have been overshadowed by Colonel Joshua Chamberlain's win of the Medal of Honor, but it was Chamberlain's idea to elevate Totsier to the post of color sergeant for the 20th Maine, a move designed to instill a new spirit in the mutineers of the regiment. The color sergeant is a dangerous but coveted position in Civil War regiments. It is generally manned by the bravest soldier in a unit. As the 20th Maine Center began to crack and give ground in the face of Alabama regiment's onslaught, Totsier stood firm. He remained upright as southern bullets buzzed and snapped in the air around him. Tatsia's personal gallantry in defending the 20th Maine colors became the regimental rallying point for companies D, E, and F to retake the center. Were it not for his heroic stand, the 20th Maine would have likely been beaten at the decisive point in the battle. So, you can get into a lot of battle stats and a bunch of different other things, but we're, we're not really going to do that just because there's better guys for that, such as JD at the History on the Ground, the um, American Battlefield Trust, and other organizations who desperately fight to keep places like this here. And to teach you about everything you need to know about these battles and places. So I highly suggest and recommend you guys go check out the um, American Battlefield Trust. Go check out JD at the History on the Ground. You'll be doing yourself a really good favor by doing that. So we're not going to get into all the Pacifics and everything, I, even though I know a lot about it. It's just, it makes a totally long video. But we're going to continue this little round top video by kind of capping it off with Devil's Den, the slaughter pen, and big round top. You know you just saw but uh we're gonna go up top here and talk about the top position of little round top let's go 